Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. We'll take up one example, important example of this phylum and that is tapeworm commonly known as tapeworm and the reason why it is known as tapeworm is the body is flat and it looks like measuring ta tape that means it is as flat as that tape. The scientific name is tinea solium. It is also known as pork tapeworm. And the reason why, is it, why it is known as pork tapeworm is that it completes some uh, stages of its life in the body of pig also. And in the pig it is present in the muscles and that is what is the pork. Meat of pig is known as pork. So commonly known as tapeworm because the body is flat like measuring tape. This is scientific name and is known as pork tapeworm because it is found there. This worm is Digenetic. Digenetic means it completes its life cycle in two hosts and these two hosts are man that is in humans and in pigs. So in humans they complete major part and in the pig also a small part. Man is the primary host and pig is the secondary host. Now what is the criteria of calling a host as primary or secondary is that if the sexual reproduction of the parasite is completed in the host, in whichever host then that becomes the primary host. So this means that this worm completes its sexual reproduction in humans and that is why humans become the primary host. The body is flat and is divided into three parts. The parts are the parts of body. There is the first part which is known as scolex which is very much similar to head like structure. The second part is known as neck or it is also known as prostrobilus. And the third part is known as the strobilus. Now what exactly is the structure? Let us draw the simple diagram so that we understand all these parts. The scolex is a bulb like structure or head like structure and then there is a narrow body part and we have to remember that this is dorso ventrally flattened. This part then extends into a long ribbon like body and as we go towards the end of the body we find that it becomes little more wider and towards the end we find the widest segments. In the neck region or let us label this part, this is the scolex which is head like and we will write down or draw the structures which are here. This part where we do not find any kind of segmentation is the neck region and after neck the complete part is the strobilus. Now in the strobilus there are segments that means from here we start seeing these segments and as you can see as we are going towards the posterior end the segments are becoming bigger and bigger. These segments are known as proglottids. So here when we talk of strobilus we can say it is the segmented part. And each segment is known as proglottid and these proglottids are of three types. One is immature proglottids, then mature proglottids and the last proglottids are known as gravid proglottids. Immature proglottids as the name tells us they would not have the sex organs fully formed. 
mature ones have the sex organs and tapeworms they are hermaphrodite. So every segment is going to have testis as well as ovaries. And the last segments where fertilization has taken place they are called gravid proglottids. In gravid proglottids there is only cyst which is present. We'll write down few things about it. Immature means sex organs not developed. Mature means sex organs fully formed and here is reproduction taking place and gravid proglottid has only uterus. So if I say that these last ones are gravid proglottid, what will we see in this gravid proglottid is the uterus which is highly folded like this and this is completely filled with only cysts and from the last part these gravid proglottids will be continuously detached. So from the neck region new proglottids will be formed and from the last part the mature gravid proglottids where there are only cysts they will continuously detach. This detachment is known as apolysis. Apolysis is loss of gravid proglottids from the last part that means these segments will get continuously detached. New ones will be formed here and the last ones will detach from here. Mature ones they are going to have testes and ovaries fertilization is going to take place it is internal and as we already talked of when we were talking about the general features that their body structure is such that it favors cross fertilization but in case of tapeworm it is self fertilization. So here we find we can write it here that fertilization is self and internal. It takes place inside the segment and gravid proglottid is the one which has only the uterus it is highly branched and it is filled with cysts. So it is filled with cysts and these cysts get excreted out from our body along with the fecal matter. Now let us come back to the scolex part that is this head like structure. This structure has hooks and suckers. There are four suckers. This is one sucker which is completely visible to us. This is the sucker, half part is visible to us and here is the third one and the half of this also is visible and the fourth one is on the back side. So there are four suckers and there are two rows of hooks. So this is one row and then there are there is one more row. So these are the hooks and these structures they are the suckers. And their main function is the attachment part. So they will help in attachment of the tapeworm in our intestine. So this is how the body is. The scolex has hooks and suckers. The neck part is unsegmented part and from here the new segments or proglottids will be produced. And the strobilus is the rest of the body which is ribbon like segmented body. First segments or proglottids are going to be immature. Then there are mature proglottids where the sex organs are functional and reproduction takes place because gametes are produced. Fertilization is internal and self and towards the end now every other structure will be lost from the segment. The structure that remains is only the uterus and which is filled with only cysts. Now due to this apolysis the segments are lost. Suppose this is the segment which is detached and in this, this is a gravid proglottid and in this there is this uterus which is highly branched and there are only cysts. Now this is lost from our body along with fecal matter and when this fecal matter is consumed by pigs, it enter the pig's body. Now here the cysts come out of this uh, the cell or the segment and these cysts they get deposited under 
the muscular surface or in the muscle just closer to the surface. Now, if there is some structure which is just underneath the surface, we would find that wherever that cyst is, there is a little bumpy part. So, if we see it from outside, it would appear like this and the reason of this or because of this reason, we call this measly pork. So, this is measly pork. In case of measles, rashes appear on our skin and because of these rashes, there are those bumpy structures which are visible and this is exactly the same thing which is seen in case of pork also. Now, if this improperly cooked pork is consume, consumed by humans, those cysts would enter into our body and that is why we say that there are two hosts that means tapeworms are digenetic. Primary host is man where sexual reproduction of the endoparasite is completely taking place and secondary host is the pig. Now there are two larval stages that means the development is indirect, indirect development and the larval stage are hexacanth and cysti circus larvae. Now all these details of the larval structures are not in our syllabus but there are larval stages that means the development is indirect and now when it comes back into our body it again anchors uh, itself to the wall of intestine and it keeps sucking the blood and in the blood all the digested food is there that is absorbed by these worms. The disease which is caused is known as teniasis named after teniasolia. So, it causes the disease which is teniasis. In teniasis there are abdominal cramps and because this structure is embedded in the intestinal wall it may result into pain and bleeding. So, it results into pain in the alimentary canal and it can cause bleeding also and this is spreading through contaminated pork. If we consume this kind of improperly cooked pork, then only these cysts are going to enter into our body and if this cycle continues, then only the tapeworm will be able to complete its life cycle. So, this is an endoparasite, digestive system is not there because it is absorbing the complete digested material. Excretion is in the form of ammonia and they have flame cells which excrete that. And as it is found inside our elementary canal, these tapeworms, I can write it here, they are anaerobic because there is no molecular oxygen available in the intestinal part where they are attached. So, they lead their life as anaerobic organisms. So, this is one very important example of platyhelminth. In the next part, we will take up two more examples. One is going to be a free living one and that is planaria and other is the liver fluke or uh, fasciola hepatica.